Let's consider the problem 1325D, Ehab and the Exorcist. In this problem, basically we're given two integers, u and v, and we have to find the shortest array of integers such that when we XOR all the elements, we get u, and when we add all the elements, we get v. So let's look at some of the sample inputs. So the first sample input is that u equals 2 and v equals 4. So we have to find elements such that when we XOR we get u, and when we add them, uh, we get v. So let's convert these numbers to binary. One, 2 is 101 one, base 2, and 4 is 100 zero, zero, base 2. Okay, so the sample output is that we can use two numbers. Uh, let's call these numbers a and b, 3 and 1. And in binary, 3 is 1, 1, and 1 is 0, 1. So clearly, if we add 3 and 1, we get 4. Uh, let's take the XOR of 3 and 1. So the first column, 1 and 1, if they're the same value, we get 0. The second column, 1 and 0, they're different values, so we get 1. And this equals 2, which is our U. So that works. Let's look at the next sample input. Oops. The next sample input where u is 1, which is just 1 in base 2, and v is 3, which is 1, 1 in base 2. Now, in the sample output, they said we have three integers, 1, 1, and 1. Clearly, if we add them, we get 3. Let's consider the XOR of 1, 1, and 1. Taking the XOR of these three integers is the same as... taking the XOR of two of them and then XORing it with a third. Or we could just XOR them all together. So we line them up and technically these are all in base two. If we have an even number of ones, the XOR will lead to a zero. And if we have an odd number, the XOR will lead to a one. If we have an odd number, the XOR leads to a one, which is the value of U. Okay. Let's now consider how to start solving this problem. So first of all, let's consider what happens if u is greater than v. That means the xor is greater than our sum. So one example that was also in the sample input is when u equals 8 and v equals 5. I'll just convert these to binary real quick. Okay. Consider what this one right here means. If we look at that same fourth row in the number of v, and this has to be the fourth row, just looking at the leftmost one, right? The leftmost one in u is a one, and the corresponding one in v is a zero. So we know that, and from u, we know that there has to be at least one one in that column, but in v, they're saying there's zero, and there's nothing in the bigger columns. That means that means that the values that x or u will sum to a value greater than v. Um, and this is not possible. So if u is greater than v, we then output negative 1. Okay. Let's consider another possible case. Um, what happens when the rightmost digit in u and v are different? So Let's just change this up a little bit. And actually, let me line up these numbers here. Okay, and then this becomes 13. Okay, is it possible for this to work out? Well, we can use the same logic as we did last time. Sorry, last time was a leftmost digit, not the rightmost digit. Now we'll look at the rightmost digit. So if you look at the XOR, we have a zero. This means that there are an even number of ones in the rightmost digit. So we'll have something one, maybe something one, and then 
things are like that. There's an even number. So there's either um, 2, 4, 6, 8, it could be 0, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, something like that. If there's an even number in the rightmost digit, all in base 2, when we add them, all of the even numbers will be carried over. So we'll have like 1, 0, something like that. Now notice that that means that this number here has to be a 0. This means that 8 and 13 cannot match, because in 13, this is a 1. Similarly, if this number here, I'm just going to remove these, was a 1, and this number here was 0, basically if the right digit doesn't match, then it would be something like this. And actually, you could have 1, 1, or you could have 3, 1, it doesn't matter. You're going to end up with a 1 and some amount carried. Which means that the sum has to end in a 1. So these two values wouldn't work out. So another possible option is the rightmost digit has to be the same. So if u is greater than b, there's not possible. And if the rightmost digit, this can be taken as u mod 2, is not equal to v mod 2, uh, this also leads to an impossible. And negative 1 just means impossible. Okay, so now we've covered all the cases that it would be impossible to make this work. Let's try considering some other cases. When will we need zero elements in our array? Well, this is a bit of an interesting case. We'll need zero elements if u equals 0 and v equals 0. In the case when u equals 0 and v equals 0, um, there we go. If u equals 0 and v equals 0, then the sum of these two, then we can take two values, a and b, which both equal 0. Right? And we see the sum is 0 and the xor is 0. Or we could just take absolutely nothing. If we have no values, then the sum is 0 and the xor is obviously 0. So then we just output 0. Alright, let's consider the case. This is the only case that we'll only need 0 values. Now let's consider the case that we only need to output 1 value. If we're outputting 1 value, let's say we're outputting this value a. The sum of all the elements must equal v. The sum of all the elements equals a. This means that v equals a. And a is the element that we're outputting. We'll worry about how to calculate it in a second. Okay, now the xor of all the elements has to equal u. Well, the xor of all the elements is also a. So, then we get u equals a. So if u equals a and v equals a, then we need to output 1. And this one element is a. But how do we know if u equals a and v equals a? Well, notice that u and a are the exact same. So this is the case that if u equals v, then we output one element, and that element is u, or v, it doesn't really matter. All right, this considers all the cases that we have no solution, zero elements, or one element. And I'll just remove this, because it's really the same case as the one below. It's exactly the same case as the one below, in fact. All right, now let's consider something a bit more tricky. The if we have more than one case, or one element. All right, let's see, is it possible to get two elements? So if we're getting two elements, actually let's look at the case when we need three elements first, that's a bit simpler. Okay, notice from up here, we already determined that u mod two um, equals v mod two. And this means that u minus v, or v minus u, is divisible by 2, right? Because they're either both odd or they're both even. Okay, so what we can do is, we can say, uh, let's look at let's look at value x equal v minus u over 2. And we're doing v minus u, not u minus v, because if u is greater than v, we already said negative 1, right? That's not possible. Okay, now let's consider the array u x and x. If we xor 
all these elements together, right? U XOR X XOR X. Well, the X and X is cancel, and we just end up with U. So if we take this array U S X and we XOR them together, we get the correct output. Now let's consider the sum u plus x plus x. Well, this is equal to u plus, uh, we have our value of x here. 2 times that is v minus u, which equals to v. This is also correct. This means that it is always possible, like if, the, if uh, it's not negative 1, because negative 1, then this value x won't work out. So, if the answer is not negative 1, it's always possible to get something of length 3. And that something of length 3 is the solution right there. This means we don't have to consider cases of length 4 and above. Okay, so so far, we've finished the outputs if they're negative 1, 0, 1, and 3 and, 3 and above. And nothing could be 4 and above. We only need to consider what happens if it's possible to do it with two answers. Okay, so let's consider this for a second. If you have two values, then we're having, let's call their two values a and b. We have to see if it's possible to pick such an a and b. Okay, so we know that a x or b equals u, and we know that a plus b equals b. And these are just by definition. All right, let's consider the following thing. Um. If we consider a and b, right, if we end all the bits between a and b, well, for every bit, there's four possible possibilities, right? For every bit, we can have 0 and 0, in which case, the end will return 0. We can have 0 and 1. Sorry, let's not and b, let's do a plus b. So 0 and 0, we return a 0. 0 and 1, we return a 1. Uh, oh, there's only just that, I guess. 1 and 0. We also return a 1. 1 and 1, we want to return a 2. Okay, so this is the same as A, X, or B. And this is also the same as A, X, or B. This is not the same as A, X, or B. Sorry, this is the same as A, X, or B. Okay, this is not the same as A, X, or B. For the 1 and 1 is not the same as A, X, or B. So in this case here, uh, A, X, or B will return 0, right? We don't want 0. What we want this to return is we want it to return 2. Um, so this is the same as 2 times A and B. Now, a couple things I want to point out a little bit clearer. AX or B in this case is 0. So we can do AX or B plus 2 times A and B. Because AX or B is 0, and 2 times A and B is the answer. In this case here, for these other three cases, a and B is 0. So we can do 2 times, we can add 2 times A and B because A and B is 0. This means that A plus B equals A X or B plus 2 times A and B. And this is a key thing I want to highlight. Okay, because we're going to use this. So let's just move this down here so we can use it. Okay, let's consider some values here. Let's make this an equal sign. We have v equals u plus 2 a and b. If we solve, we get a and b equals v minus u over 2. Note that v minus u over 2 equals our definition from x up here. Which equals x. 
So we have a and b equals x. Okay, let's consider the relationship between ax or b and a and b. So if a is 1, okay, let's look at all these cases. Uh, u is ax or b, and x, as we determined from up here, is a and b. Okay, so a and b is 0 for all these and 1 for the last one. Now, ax or b is 0, 1, 1, 0. So, notice that ax or b, and I'll just write that up here so we're a little clear. This is a and b. Notice that a x or b and a and b are never one at the same time. So if we take u and x, we always get zero. So this tells us that if it's a possible if it's if it's possible to have only two values, it's possible to have only a value a and b the new and x definitely equals zero. Um, okay, so we know that u and x equals zero. And so basically, uh, we can then find our, we know that we then have to find our values a and b. So notice how earlier what was that? We had, we picked u, x, and x. If we know that u and x equals 0, then u x or x equals u plus x, right? Oops. So from u x x, if here we know that u and x equals 0, so this tells us that u x or x equals u plus x. And note that's because u x or x is either if it's a zero, basically u and x will never both be one. So that's why we can use this relationship here. So we can transform this into u plus x and x. So those are our two values for a and b. So this is the code. So the first thing we determined is when when the answer doesn't exist. So when will the answer doesn't exist if u is greater than v, or if the last digit, the rightmost digit of u and v are different, as you said earlier. We also we also said that the answer equals zero, as in there's zero items in the list if u and v both equal one. Then we said when is the answer one? Well, there's only one element to output if u equals v, and that element is u. Okay, so I think here's the easy cases. Then we get into a little more tricky cases. So we let x equal v minus u over 2. And again, v minus u is divisible by 2 because we already guaranteed the last digit is the same. Because if it was different, it would have gone into this if statement. Okay, so we then take u and x. If u and x uh, is greater than 0, so if, if it equals 0, then there's only two values. If it's greater than zero, then there's three values. And those three values are u, x, and x, as we have determined. Okay, there's only two values. Then those two values are u plus x and x, as we've said. And there's only two values if u and x equals zero. So then we can combine the u and x into one value and just have an x.